Hello and welcome once again to Baked Beans Garage where, oh baby she's crusty part 4. But at least there's a floor. So this golf now has fewer holes in it if you saw the last video, but there's still plenty to do so let's get into it. So in preparation for a shell swap I've started to make this shell not as terrible. Last time you saw me put floors in it, check out the last video for that and some details. And while the floors and seat mounts are solid there's still plenty to do. So going from bottom to top, each rocker has its own little hole here where the door weather stripping meets and all the water drains and makes that happen. Also a little spicy sadness right there. Also this window was missing for a while but the weather stripping was still in there just long enough to hold that moisture in and give us these little treats. But the most prevalent issue still is this windshield frame. They all like to do this. This one's particularly advanced. We got a few visible holes but the underside is just as ugly. And you can still buy a new stamping of this piece but the GTI still has a half decent windshield frame and I've always loved this little bit of patina so I'm gonna yank that out and plop it in there. So of course to begin the windshield has to come out so suppose I'll make some room here. So of course this windshield's just glued in straight onto the pinch weld. Uh, some Mark II's, not sure which markets had a gasketed in windshield with no glue. The glue makes it a little more difficult, but since all the interior is apart, we do have access to the inside here. So I'll just cut what I can with the utility knife and hopefully not have to use a wire. So as you saw, I ended up using an alternative method to get the windshield out. That's actually a Honda method. But as always, especially with a Mark II, the rust is a lot worse than it looked to begin with, but just about what I was expecting. So to begin peeling this up, first we got to get the uh, wiper gear out, as well as the rain gutters. So to pull these rails off, you're best off starting at the back, but we'll go over how they're actually attached first. Here's a pretty little picture I drew. So that black piece, that's the gutter itself, what runs the length of the roof. The blue, of course, is the body, and the red in there is the little nylon clips. So as you can see, it's captured both by these nylon clips. In here, there's a little aluminum rail, what's molded into the gutter. And then it also clips over this little doohickey on the edge of the pinch weld. So you pretty much have two separate fastening mechanisms you gotta overcome to get these off. And again, starting at the back, the first clip is right around this area. Even more difficult if you have nice paint. Mercifully, we don't have to worry about that here. Silly me, I forgot the first step. The first step is to accept that you're gonna break some of the clips, if not all of them. They're, I think, still available. And I already ripped the rubber. At least I don't think these are the ones that are going to go back on the car. But we'll get to that. I've made a mess. And that was the first clip breaking. So now we can try to massage that rubber piece up over that lip. Now the other side I've been dreading because there is some questionable bodywork, but we'll see just how bad. Pain. While still not great, this wasn't quite as bad as I was expecting. One thing I do know about this car is that I think this whole quarter was replaced at some point, evidenced by the windshield urethane that was gluing this in, which is why I gave up on keeping that straight. Said bodywork is further evidenced by whatever that is right there, as well as the paint on this whole quarter being checked quite badly. It looks kind of nifty. I like that. But this is not the point of today's video. 
So I've already cleaned up what little seam sealer is there with the wire wheel just to see what I'm dealing with. You can see that little bevel where they intended for the water to drain out. Doesn't really help when the rust is starting up here as evidenced on this side by this little baby Swiss cheese action going on. But since there is nothing under that front edge, what interfaces with the hood, we just have these few spot welds on the outside and then I think I'm gonna slice it right about there. And that seems pretty much already gone, so that's not gonna fight too much. So as we could have guessed, pretty hammered. Uh, the inside flange on the pinch weld seems to be not nearly as bad, which doesn't make too much sense to me. And once I clean this up a little bit, that's probably the line I'm gonna follow to butt weld into the new piece. And then of course, just replace them spot welds. Three little guys here, I had to drill out because I couldn't get the grinder in there. And I also used the screwdriver and hammer, some can opener action to make it nice and mangled, but it'll clean up, don't worry. Onto the new piece. And as much as I love this little bit of patina on the header panel of the GTI, this windshield frame isn't quite perfect, although it's quite a lot better. Now, one thing I noticed on the Golf is when someone put that new windshield in, they sealed right over these drain holes, got one on either side, and that certainly didn't help with that. So enter Mark II number three, or at least about 15% of it. This is what so graciously provided us with those uh, seat rails from last time and this windshield frame was pretty nice so I'm just gonna grab the sawzall and take what I need this also lets me instead of having to drill these out I can grind off the spot welds from below what to preserve as much of this as possible With all the sharp bits taken off of that, save for the inside of the lower pinch weld here, I think I'm just gonna do a butt weld right along this edge to keep this nice shiny one instead of this old crusty one. So I'm gonna pull these hood hinges out for clearance and start cleaning that up and doing some hacking. So that of course is a very rough cut. I've marked out an even cut there. I'm gonna clean that up and then start laying it in here to see where that needs to be. But first I'm gonna clean up this scuttle a little bit and here we can see some of that old sealant starting to crack. That's just gonna be 
a moisture magnet once it's back, you know, in the elements. Speaking of moisture ingress, this seam is going to be pretty close to how it's cut right now. I don't really have a better way to do it with the tools and skills that I have. Luckily, however, you can see through to the cabin in there. I'll be able to spray from the inside and coat that with a Corrosion X, some kind of penetrating oil. So after several hours of poking and prodding and going on and off three million times, this is where I landed. I don't know how to explain what that line is, but just look at it. Same on this side, I used the little pin for the clip, measuring there to there and there to there. What? So I think it's about in the right spot. All that's left in here is to trace out this line and then make that fit nice and good. Over here, you can see I've kept some of this inner pinch weld at the corners. Just need to plug some holes in there and start zapping. So now I will test fit the new glass as I have a new piece to make sure it's close enough. And then I'll start trimming that up and start zapping it in. Also got to drill some holes for the plug welds, of course. So in cleaning up the scuttle, I found these holes. That's nice. So if you know Mark II's, you know they have the plastic scuttle tray under here, what catches all the leaves and sticks from the vents in the hood, or the inlets in the hood, rather. And this area that should normally be clean and dry, obviously, got packed with dirt and leaves and whatnot. And that just holding it down to the metal, even being a southern car, we still get this lovely action here. So with this much pitting, this panel should definitely be replaced, or at least sectioned in, but I don't feel like doing that. So I'm going to try this wrong method. Now, so far, I've had the navel jelly chewing on it. Uh, that I've had mixed results in the past. It's hard to tell if it's done anything here and nod at it with some wire wheels. So I've used this method on much smaller pinholes, nothing quite this big, but the areas where there's no metal left, I'm just gonna slap some tape on the bottom and then slather it with some JB Weld, or at least Poverty brand JB Weld. So yes, admittedly incorrect, but what are you, a cop? Just like airplanes, if you say it's experimental, you can do whatever you want. I am curious to see how this will hold up over time, even though I do have an intact scuttle tray and this should stay dry. Not like it's structural, this is just separating the air from the cab so the intake there draws in the fresh air. That being said, I'll just montage through fixing that, painting in here, sealing it up, and then painting the underside of the new cowl panel, and then we'll be welding. Pay attention now, you're about to see something exceptionally rare. That's me making a mistake. I sprayed the top coat in the scuttle a little too heavy, and that gave the solvents in the paint time to eat down into the first coat, and that made it swell up and wrinkle and look all nasty. So I'll have to cut that down and redo it later. Also had to get a glamour shot of that nice shiny dash panel before 13 seconds later when it's all nasty and dusty. That was also my seat for welding the top of the windshield frame, so you can imagine. Speaking of the top of the windshield frame, my guess is that someone scratched it down to bare metal at some point, replacing this glass. 
And then two decades later out in the weather, this is what we have. I had to do three small patches at the top and then I got away with just welding up a few pinholes along the A-pillars. That'll make it all smooth and metal from the top side, then I'll be able to seal it up from behind through the A-pillars and the roof support. And in the meantime, I'm just rattle canning it black so it doesn't flash rust. I don't want to lay the windshield urethane over an uncatalyzed paint like the rattle can I'm using right now. I'm not confident that the solvents in the urethane are going to play nice with the dried spray paint. So I'll take this off later and use an epoxy primer or something just so my windshield stays in. So this rust most likely came down from the top, what with the metal clips and the weather stripping, chewing away at that paint, causing a little water to touch it, and then all that caterpillar action just crept down into the rocker. And I did expect that problem, however, this is a pretty suspicious place to find body filler, so that might not be the only issue here. Now obviously the most efficient course of action is just to pretend like I didn't see it, but I gotta cut about right there anyways. <laughs> Mercifully, no more holes. Does look like there was a weld right here. Someone was just a little heavy handed with the welder and warped this all, so now that just has a dish in it. I don't care about that, but I do want this hole to be gone. And I know this is getting dangerously close to actually having the correct tools, so unsubscribe if you must, but this little chibi sawzall has become quite the favorite of mine pretty quickly. And yes, I'm up to date on my tetanus shot. Yeah, there's a seam right there. But mercifully, that rust doesn't creep down on the underneath side at all. You can see where it ends right there. Ooh, and even a little piece of welding wire left over. Go stick that on the spool. So to the body shop employee that thought to himself, no one's ever gonna see that. I'm judging you. At least I can touch that up while I'm in here. Not sure where the scene started and ended, but you can see the bottom's also not welded up either. Ah, uh, guess I can't pretend like I didn't see that, but no matter, just we'll zip it up while I'm in here. Interesting failure mode here. I am a fan of this implement, however, this little rubber wheel at the end has since worn itself into a bit of a ball shape and that makes it so the belt doesn't stay centered anymore and it keeps flying off like that.
Same situation on the captain's side rocker, except there's also a little patch of baby Swiss towards the aft end of the door jam. I got away with it on the windshield frame, so I wanted to try just welding up all the pinholes, but I quickly discovered that was a waste of time and I had to cut it out and do a proper patch. Any minute now. Hey, hey, dumbass. Huh. I guess all's well that ends well. That was a bit of a waste of argon. Are you happy with yourself? Yeah, fair enough. As long as I don't look at the underside when I go to paint it, I'd probably turn into a pillar of salt. So that metal was pretty hammered and stretched. I didn't feel like taking the time, not that I have the skill to make that nice and flat, but functional, there is metal where there wasn't. The outside of the rocker was absolutely paper thin, so I ended up laying some more boogers onto it. It looks pretty bad. Mercifully, no one's ever going to see this. I don't have any friends to put right here, and the only person that might see that has pretty low standards, so I don't care. That, of course, being your mom. And furthermore, back here, there was a hole there, and it wasn't rust. It was just a hole that was left when someone did some booger welding in here. Not that I'm one to talk, but it was kind of just filled in with Bondo. Delightful. Speaking of holes, you got this guy. I went and popped that guy out. We'll talk about how to do that later. But that, again, isn't rust. That was kind of just left when someone did repairs. Also, all this nastiness. Not sure what was going on there. We'll clean it up maybe a little bit. Mercifully, no big holes, except where my friend's pointing. So hopefully that won't take too long, but now I've done it by saying something. Pretty that up a touch and then move on to the fun ones. Good enough to my standards. It'll probably hold a window. I was able to kind of slather some paint up on the underside, so hopefully it stays metal. And you probably saw the mask and cleaned up some surface rust there. Just kidding. There was pitting. There's more JB Weld. Anyways, on to the fun ones right here. Been dreading these, so I left it for last. Never had to do much welding on the outside of the bodywork before. We'll see how warped it gets. But first, I don't want to have to patch all the way up this pillar, so first I'm going to clean this up with a wire wheel and see if I can just bzz, bzz, to undo that pitting a little bit. So that honestly turned out a lot better than I think it had any right to be, uh, given that's completely the wrong way to do it. Got a little carried away and went and did this little hole too. You saw me preheating this whole area with the torch, what to try to minimize the warp in here. But this one did get away from me a little bit. There's a little bump right there, but I'm gonna have to rework that whole windowsill before I put that window in anyways. So onto the big holes. That's a little too complicated for my metal working skills to make a patch, so I'm just gonna borrow some sheet metal from there. Now getting these quarter glasses out is fairly simple. I like to go from the inside already taken this non-door card off as well as the little plastic piece back there and was reminded of some rust repairs of a much younger chinchilla. Don't worry it gets a lot worse than that we'll get to it. Also got to get rid of the pillar trims. I've already taken off the C pillar trim by crashing into a ditch. There might be a simpler way and have to pluck that guy off too. I do miss the plaid. Just like the hatch glass these are just gasketed in. And it is recommended to have a friend on the outside to catch it what, so it doesn't hit the floor, but of course I don't have any of those, so I have used some tape. And you'll actually find that in many social situations, actual friends can be substituted for a bit of tape. So I'll start at the bottom corner and you just fold the rubber lip up over the pinch weld. And then once the entire bottom edge and the lower two corners are popped out, the whole thing will just fall out. And this tempered glass will actually 
flex a fair bit, I think, more than many people will like to give it credit for. However, being tempered glass, still be careful, because it won't give you any warning. It will just all of a sudden explode into many millions of tiny little redneck diamonds. And while both cars have a healthy right side glass, I actually need this one. Get out of the way! Almost like I knew what I'm doing. Luckily, putting it back in is a problem for another day. That's the real fun part. That is just my luck. Look how nice that was. I've noticed recently that the professionals on the internet like to complain when they see someone putting Bondo on bare metal instead of epoxy primer. And while I take all comments super duper seriously, I still have yet to have any of my body filler fall off. I'd say just read the tin, but I can't read. Hey, remember that thing I said I wasn't gonna do? This is what happens when you do that. I ran out of talent and put too much heat somewhere in there, and now there's a bit of a, a wall up in there. Now the best thing to do about this would be to paint it flat white, what, so you don't see it as much. Uh, I'm going to do nearly the correct thing and paint it flat black. That'll still help. We'll see if it bothers me enough that I want to address it later. Now, if you've been watching my build on the Volvo wagon, you'll know that I've been doing that mostly correctly. Let this build act as a bit of a foil to that. This will be kind of correct. Mostly quick and dirty, much like the car itself will be. And this may be the brain damage from the accident talking, but I do want to keep the dumpster fire spec patchwork livery, what I had on there, so... I'm just going to spray this real quick and dirty. Suppose I'll demonstrate something at least half useful while I'm doing this wrong. So what I have on there now is called a tack coat, just real light mist and wait for it to flash off. That helps prevent runs and other nasty stuff. So to get half decent results with a spray can, the trick is to overlap it so that each new pass flows into the next one, or the previous one. So hopefully it picks up. You'll see that it's that nice shiny gloss while it's still a liquid and when I lay the next one into it I get full coverage and that liquid flows up into the previous pass. Now obviously it's going to be far from perfect but that's how you can get half decent results from a rattle can. At least it did look nice until one of the hatch struts exploded and leaked all its juices across the new paint. Anyways, if you remember the other side with that nasty checked paint, I still don't know what it's made out of, but I decided not to Google it just in case it's lead or something. 
Anyways, it wouldn't sand worth a damn, and I clogged up five or ten pads before I just gave up and tried to smooth it out with some filler primer. And that didn't work at all, so I just kept throwing pads at it until it was gone. So that came out about as well as I think can be expected. It's at least up to the standards of what we're trying to emulate. That little whoop de doo is a little more noticeable than I would have liked, but is what it is. Good enough, I already got it dusty, tried to wipe it off and kind of sullied the finish a little bit, but that's always going to be the case with a flat finish. This isn't going to hold up to weather or abrasion or anything. It's going to kind of weather and hopefully look a little more like that eventually. But no more holes, it'll hold a window, it's one color. Good enough. And the astute viewer will have noticed that the GTI on both sides has three different pinstripes, none of which line up. And of course on the rear quarter, being an original GTI, we had the red stripe. And obviously recreating that is stupid and pointless, so I have some generic vinyl pinstripe tape that'll go on at a later date. Also painted the door jam there, and it gives me a chance to talk about the single best $2 you can spend on a Mark II. You can get these from Euro Parts. here's a part number. That little nylon sleeve likes to wear out and your door goes cuckoo cuckoo. Obviously can't tighten that yet because it adjusts and I need to put the door on. Anyways, to finish keeping the rust out, all I gotta do is blast the rest of the old seam sealer out of these aprons. We'll give that some paint and then I think that'll be it for today. And with that, this shell is very nearly 100% rust-free. There's still a little hole under the rear seat, but the tank has to come out next time anyway, so I'll address that then. Still have to pretty up the engine bay and delete a few things, maybe fix the rust hole in the battery tray, but I'll address that when I start getting ready to do the swap. Not sure what I'll do about the roof and the hatch yet, but I kind of like how nasty they look, adding another color to the dumpster fire cup livery. Also, you can see I put the stripe on. It's a real GTI now. Anyways, pretty happy with the results. Uh, here's an outro. So as always, if you're still here, just know I appreciate you watching. If you've liked the video, please do leave a like. Perhaps comment, subscribe, click bell. I know most of you guys are here because of the Volvo 740 build. I promise next time I'll be on that. Sorry to disappoint. Anyways, this has been Baked Beans Garage. I am Chinchilla. I will see you next time.